Hi, I'm Stefano and I'm an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. Before we begin, I'll provide a roadmap of what we will cover in this series of videos on inflation and its measurement. In today's video, we will look at what inflation is and why it is important, and we'll also look at some inflation data in Australia. The next video provides an overview of how inflation is calculated and some of the challenges the calculation presents. Finally, the third video discusses various measures of inflation that are useful when studying trends in the economy. Together, the three videos provide an outline of key concepts related to inflation and its measurement. This will be helpful background material to understand the RBA's flexible inflation target, which is covered by an explainer in the education section of the RBA website. You can find links to these videos in the description. Let's start with a definition. The term inflation generally refers to an increase in the prices of goods and services in the economy. It is measured as the percentage change in the prices paid for these goods and services at two different points in time. For example, it can be from one year to the next, in which case we speak of annual inflation, or for what, from one quarter to the next, quarterly inflation. We're interested in measuring and tracking inflation because it gives us important signals about conditions in the economy as a whole. The most well-known way to measure inflation is the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, which measures the percentage change in the price of a basket of goods and services consumed by households. The basket contains the goods and services that are purchased by the average household in the economy. And these will change over time to reflect changes in household spending behaviour. We typically hear about inflation as we're used to prices rising over time. Think about the price of a haircut, for example. However, prices can also fall under certain circumstances, like in the case of televisions, and that phenomenon is called deflation. Let's now take a step back and start with a simple example before talking about inflation in Australia. Imagine an economy where households only buy one good, apples. In this case, the basket of goods and services that we use to calculate CPI only includes this one good, so our calculation becomes quite simple. Let's assume that in 2018, the price of an apple in our economy was $1. By the following year, in 2019, the price had increased to $1.05. Using the numbers from our example to calculate the percentage change in the price of apples, we get a growth rate of 5%. That is to say, in our simple economy, annual CPI inflation was 5%. Of course, we live in a complex economy, so in practice, there are tens of thousands of goods and services on which households spend their income. To measure inflation in this case, then, many of these goods and services must be included in the CPI basket. For the Australian economy, the CPI is calculated by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the ABS, and published once a quarter. As in our simple economy, we track the change in the price of apples over a year. In reality, the ABS collects prices for thousands of items in the CPI basket, tracks changes in these prices from quarter to quarter, and aggregates them to calculate CPI inflation. In a related video, I explain this calculation process and some of its challenges in more detail. Why does CPI inflation matter? Why do we measure it? Why do we track it over time? We care about consumer price inflation because it helps us understand how many goods and services families can buy with their incomes and how this changes over time. For example, imagine a family whose income doubles over 10 years from $100 to $200. Now imagine a situation where the prices of the items they buy double as well, so there will be no change in what they can afford. The new income will buy the same goods and services as before. On the other hand, if prices had increased more gradually, say to $130 instead of $200, the new income would allow them to buy the previous items and leave some money for additional purchases. Among other things, low and stable inflation, that is, prices rising, 
but slowly, something we call price stability, reduces uncertainty in the economy and helps households and businesses in making their spending and investment decisions, which are affected by the prices of the items they buy and sell. In Australia, the Reserve Bank's monetary policy decisions are guided by a flexible inflation target. The RBA's target is to keep annual CPI inflation between 2 and 3% on average over time. The Reserve Bank uses this inflation target to help achieve its goals of price stability, which we have just seen, full employment, and the prosperity and welfare of the Australian people. Monitoring inflation over time allows the RBA to evaluate the outcome of past decisions and inform its future decisions. How inflation targeting works, the way the Reserve Bank implements monetary policy, and what causes higher or lower inflation are explained in more detail in other videos available on our website. Now that we're comfortable with some key concepts about inflation, uh, what it is and why it matters, let's look at some data. This chart tracks CPI inflation in Australia over the past 25 years or so. The line tracks the change in the price of the CPI basket from the year before. We've been calling this annual inflation in the video. The bars track the change from the previous quarter. They are tracking the same thing, just over two different periods of time. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about reading charts like this one, you can watch our videos on reading and interpreting charts on the RBA website. Over the period shown in the chart, annual inflation has been around 2.3% on average. It has been at times above the RBA's target range and at times below, which illustrates the flexibility of the target. More recently, in the second quarter of 2020, you can see the largest quarterly decline in CPI inflation for the period in the chart. And this has caused annual inflation, the line, to become negative. As we discussed, CPI inflation aggregates price changes of many goods and services, and some of these were impacted directly or indirectly by the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, the fall in global oil prices reduced fuel prices in Australia during the quarter. And government policies aimed at reducing the cost of childcare for families caused a large decline in the price of the childcare item included in the CPI basket. We'll leave it here for our introduction to the topic of inflation. Links to the videos I mentioned during the presentation are included in the description. See you next time.